for time for an energy break okay so it looks like I've been going for an hour and I got half of the unit empty so I'm gonna take a little snack break I think I grossly underestimated oh no how hungry I was gonna be I'm just throwing it on the floor, guys. I'll pick it up. Oh, so I think I grossly underestimated whew, how exhausted I was going to be. I brought cheese and crackers. <laughs> I think I need something more than cheese and crackers. But oh, So let me tell you um how i've been doing storage as kind of new nomad i'm starting my third year so my first year i had storage and i got a deal and then while i was away out on the road they upped it on me i don't remember the price but i think i was paying under a hundred a month and then it went up over a hundred a month so then I got this storage unit, which is, I think it's like 10 by 10 by 15 or something like this, 7 by 15. Sorry for eating, I'm so hungry. Um, and it was good because I had furniture. I don't know if you guys know this, but when I first hit the road, my intention was to use the RV as a means to go explore different areas and cities and find a place I would like to live and get a tiny home. And I actually found the perfect place. I gotta eat. <laughs> I found the perfect place in Bellingham, Washington. It was lovely, forested. I found this place that was part mobile home part rv park and so i could have a park model or a, you know a tiny house park model or a fifth wheel or my rv i don't know anyway it was affordable uh it was so cute you know how sometimes those places can look like people have gone there and they're just waiting to die this place was just precious and it was because there was a lot of pride in ownership of each of the plots. So people had just done beautiful, adorable little landscaping in their areas. So um, they didn't have anything available, but I met like three people. I bet you're surprised by that. I met like three people who live there um, and they sent me off with an application and you know, I was gonna be on the waiting list. And as I was driving away, I started thinking to myself and I thought, okay, so I'm definitely going to need to find um, a carpenter or somebody to build me one of those decks. I'm going to need to get, you know, pest control service now, you know, since I'm situated. And um, I'm going to need to uh, definitely put a little bit of money into landscaping so that I can make sure my little area is as sweet and as adorable as everyone else's. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. And all this newfound freedom I had of not having a mortgage and a land and a gardener and a pest, all that. Anyway, my newfound freedom was just like, I could feel it draining out of me. And it was in that moment that I knew I did not want to be in the sticks and bricks. I want to be a nomad. So that was my nomad moment. when I had sold my house and packed everything up, which this is part of that, I had furniture because my criteria that I used when I downsized my house was if you were appropriate for my tiny house, you could go into storage. And if you were not appropriate for a tiny house, then you would be sold or given away or donated or whatever. So I had some of my favorite, favorite pieces of furniture. Well, when I came back 
after that first year and they upped my charges in, in Las Vegas, I came here to Pahrump, got a, a unit for half the price, so it was $50 a month, and I still had a few pieces of my furniture. So I was able to sell those, most of them. I still have two pieces. Hopefully I'll sell them this visit. And the funniest thing is I love my couches. My couches are like the most comfortable things. You know how when you have a couch and everybody, how one is a chaise and everybody likes to be on the chaise? I made my whole couch and love seat chaises. So everybody got a chaise. Anyway, um, the people that live right across from the storage place here, they bought my couches. So I just saw the guy and I asked him, how are the couches? So at least they've been adopted by a good family. <laughs> um, anyway, so now I'm, I don't need the, I've got most of the furniture gone. I don't need this size unit and I've been able to downsize again and cut the rate down again. Now I'm gonna pay $30 for a month for the year. However, it's a much smaller unit, so it's forcing a secondary purge. So, I used to be a professional organizer, and I don't really ascribe to that. If you haven't used it in two years, give it away, because I don't know about you, but I've had things where I haven't touched them for an extended period of time, and then I did need them, and I was very glad that I had them. So, my rule of thumb is, You've got your designated space, whatever that is, a closet, a storage unit, a garage, doesn't matter what it is, but that is your space. And you can have whatever you want that fits within that space. It's when there's an overflow, now you need to start making choices. You either need to swap out something for something. I used to do that with my clothes. But that's when you have to start giving things up. And I generally worked, you know, I used to work with my clients to ferret out a criteria. So like I said, when I downsized my house, the criteria was appropriate for a tiny house or not. Made it really easy. So now in this case, um, I'm gonna be, I'm really kind of down to like memorabilia, papers, things of that nature. So. I'm taking over most of my stuff. If it fits, I don't have to make any decisions. But if I don't have enough space, I'm gonna have to start making some choices. So the way I've got things right now is the, my papers, my memorabilia, my memories, annuals from high school, whatever. Um, those are all things I wanna keep. This pile back over here are things that are appropriate for a garage sale. And I think I'm going to go to the swap meet next weekend and see what I can sell. And then whatever's left will get donated to Goodwill or go to the dump. So uh, don't have to make any hard choices right now other than what I want to keep and hopefully it'll fit in the new storage unit and what's appropriate for the garage sale swap meet next week. You know, another thing I was thinking about I should just eat and not be talking. I want to talk to you though, and I'm hungry. I'm multitasking. So you know how Bob has the RTR? We all know and love that. And then Jamie has his van build. And lots of people look forward and make plans to go there. I'm thinking that I'm gonna start doing organizing because I'm really good at downsizing, organizing, and you know, helping people fit into small spaces. So I think I'm gonna start, there's gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna establish like Rometown Girls Organizing Week, <laughs> I don't know. But that's something I'm seriously considering and having a gathering at least once a year, maybe more if it works. We're gonna downsize and organize our living spaces in our rigs, be it a class A or be it a, a van or a tent and a bike whatever it is. Stay tuned for that. Okay, but now I gotta get back to this. <laughs>
my new space. All of this, it's gotta fit in there. So let me explain to you the way the mind of an organizer works. Even the mind of a super tired organizer. Okay, so what I've done is I've pulled my heaviest boxes. When I originally packed, I noted boxes as being heavy, medium, Somewhere there's boxes that are light. Probably up here. So the first step is all the heaviest boxes have to be at the bottom of the stacks, right? And then medium and then light. Also, I'm gonna put the boxes that have items that I'm rarely gonna need to get into as far back as possible. And the boxes I need to get into more routinely they're going to be more forward. Okay, so the first thing is figuring out the heaviest boxes and how I'm going to make stacks in there so there's enough room. <laughs> okay, let's go do that. got the basic map. So I've decided that on one side we're gonna go long. I'll tell you what that's for in a minute. All right, I'll tell you now. See all those boxes that are cardboard that if they got wet, they'd get wet, the contents would get wet. So I like to stack them up on something like this. I just have it positioned that way because I, I can get two stacks of boxes. I do that a lot. I put things that I don't want damp, water damaged up. And the same with that. My body step. Remember step aerobics? <laughs> um, I have my art portfolio and pictures, you know, big, large picture frames. So again, things I don't want to get water damaged will live up on that. Curious to know what's still worth paying storage fees for, because I'm not ready to part with it yet. I'll give you a peek in my boxes. First we've got, this is everything Christmas that I am just not ready to part with. Back here are two things of books, school books. Um, when I went to school to get my master's to be a marriage and family therapist, I don't want to part with that stuff yet. Oh, this is journals and annuals and scrapbooks. This is tools. Tools that I didn't take aboard the RV, but I'm not ready to part with. Office supplies. Yeah, I don't know that I can keep that. But remember I told you, if I've got storage room for it, I'll keep it. When I don't, then I have to reassess. This box is all my, my cabin stuff. All my bears and just everything. You know, a long, long time ago, I don't know, maybe even still, women would have trousseaus, right? For getting married and they would have a box and a chest and they would save things for, I don't know, their wedding night or whatever. And I bet you have people do it for babies too, but I did it for my cabin. <laughs> so I was always collecting knickknacks and things that would be in my cabin. Now Scout's my cabin, but I can't have all these knickknack craps. I got another couple heavy 
boxes. So, so let me tell you the next level. So I don't have any more room. I, I don't think I have any more room for another base box. It might right here. Um, the reason I'm, I'm reserving a blank space is these are all my files. That's what came out of my file cabinet. I didn't want to drag the file cabinet around, but I do need the content. So that stuff I do get into, that's documents and receipts and all kinds of stuff. So that will be right here at the front. When I come to town, more than likely that is the stuff I'm gonna need to get into. Now that I have the basic floor blueprint, the next thing is I have some boxes that stack well on top of each other because they're similar. Um, and now that I have the heaviest things on the bottom, what I'll do now is I have a couple more heavies. I'll put those on top and then I'll go to the mediums. And I have all these boxes marked as mediums and they're gonna be the next level. Okay, so that's the next thing of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do these file boxes. I just have to assess what's in them. I'll open them up. And again, I will put contents that I don't expect to need. I'll put those on the bottom. And then obviously the, the boxes I think I might need to get into the most will be on the top where I stack all the file boxes. That's, that's the logic. <music> shared some good stuff with you today. Oh, I hope they have a hot tub back where I'm staying because every single part of me hurts. I see a lot of Advil in my very near future. 